General audience number six of October 24th, 1979. In the last conversation, we began to analyze the meaning of man's original solitude. The starting point was given to us by the Yahweh's text, and in particular by the following words, It is not good that man should be alone. I want to make him a help similar to himself. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The analysis of the pertinent passages of Genesis, see Genesis chapter 2, has brought us to surprising conclusions with regard to anthropology, that is, the fundamental science about man contained in this book. In fact, in relatively few sentences, the ancient text sketches man as a person with the subjectivity characterizing the person. When God Yahweh gives to the first man, formed in this way, the commandment concerning all the trees that grow in the Garden of Eden, above all the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this adds the aspect of choice and self-determination, that is, of free will, to the outline of man described above. In this way, man's image as a person endowed with his own subjectivity appears before us, as finished in its first sketch. The concept of original solitude includes both self-consciousness and self-determination. The fact that man is alone contains within itself this ontological structure, and at the same time, it indicates authentic understanding. Without this, we cannot correctly understand the next words, which constitute the prelude to the creation of the first woman. I want to make a help. Above all, however, without that deep meaning of man's original solitude, one cannot understand and correctly interpret the whole situation of man created in the image of God, which is the situation of the first, in fact, primeval con covenant with God. This man, about whom the account of the first chapter says that he has been created in the image of God, is manifested in the second account as a subject of the covenant. That is, a subject constituted as a person, constituted according to the measure of partner of the absolute, inasmuch as he must consciously discern and choose between good and evil, between life and death. The words of the first command of God, Yahweh, from Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, which speak directly about the submission and dependence of man-creature on his creator, indirectly reveal precisely this level of humanity as subject of the covenant and partner of the absolute. Man is alone. This is to say that through his own humanity, through what he is, he is at the same time set into a unique, exclusive, and unrepeatable relationship with God himself. The anthropological definition contained in the Yahweh's text in its own way approaches the theological definition of man that we find in the first creation account. Let us make man in our image and likeness from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Solitude and the meaning of the body. Man, formed in this way, belongs to the visible world. He is a body among bodies taking up again and in some way reconstructing the meaning of original solitude, we apply it to man in his totality. The body by which man shares in the visible created world makes him at the same time aware of being alone. Otherwise, he would not have been able to arrive at this conviction, which in fact he reached, as we read in Genesis chapter 2, verses 20, if his body had not helped him to understand it making the matter evident to him. The awareness of solitude could have been shattered precisely because of the body itself. Basing himself on the experience of his own body, the man, Adam, could have reached the conclusion that he is substantially similar to the other living beings, Animalia. By contrast, as we read, he did not arrive at this conclusion, but in fact reached the conviction that he was alone. The Yahweh's text never speaks directly about the body. Even when it says, the Lord God formed man with dust of the ground, it speaks about man and not the body. Nevertheless, the account 
taken as a whole, offers us sufficient bases to perceive this man, created in the visible world, precisely as body among bodies. The analysis of the Yahweh's text will allow us further to link man's original solitude with the awareness of the body, through which man distinguishes himself from all the animalia and separates himself from them, and through which he is a person. One can affirm with certainty that man thus formed has at the same time the awareness and consciousness of the meaning of his own body. Moreover, he has this based on the experience of original solitude. All of this can be considered an implication of the second account of the creation of man, and the analysis of the text allows us to develop it amply. When at the beginning of the Yahweh's text, even before it speaks about the creation of man from dust of the ground, we read, No one tilled the ground and made the water of the channels rise from the earth to ir irrigate the whole soil. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. We rightly associate this passage with the one from the first account in which the divine commandment is expressed. Fill the earth, subdue it, and rule from Genesis chapter 1 verses 28. The second account alludes, in an explicit way, to the work man does to cultivate the earth. One finds the first fundamental means for ruling the earth in man himself. Man can rule the earth because only he, and none of the other living beings, is able to cultivate and transform it according to his own needs. He made the water of the channels rise from the earth to irrigate the soils. This first sketch of a specifically human activity seems to be part of man's definition as it emerges from the analysis of the Yahweh's text. As a result, one can affirm that this sketch is intrinsic to the meaning of original solitude and belongs to that dimension of solitude through which man has from the beginning been in the visible world as a body among bodies and discovers the meaning of his own bodily we will return to this subject in the next meditation.